Welcome to another episode of the 10 Minute Land Surveyor. I'm Dave Woolley. Today I'm going to finish up my series on least squares. And what I'm going to talk about today is coordinates and coordinate collecting. You understand that coordinates are a byproduct of measurements, but they aren't absolute or even near absolute. I've come to realize that there are quite a few surveyors out there that are collecting coordinates and importing them directly to CAD with no measurement analysis or without any type of adjustment of their data. And I suppose if you're going around a block and you have four monuments and the block's relatively short, probably doesn't make much difference. But if you're measuring any amount of data, you should be doing an adjustment and an analysis on your measurements. And I'm going to show you why today. Uh, why it's important or how we transitioned, I want to talk a little bit about the history of how we used to do things compared to how they are now. Uh, in, in the old days, in the 80s and, and into the early 90s, we used to uh, keep hand notes. And so we would turn our angles four times, we'd record the first, second, and fourth angle measurement, and we would record uh, distances. Uh, at early, early, we used to record uh, slope distances and reduce them down to horizontal. But uh, most of the instruments started, had the ability to reduce uh, slope down to horizontal, so we started recording horizontal distances. And what we would do is we would balance our angles. It'd be uh, n minus 2 times 180, and we would adjust them. And uh, this was a real common procedure, and you would run a traverse closure, and you'd run a compass rule adjustment. The challenge with a compass rule adjustment was is if you had a boxed figure and you had four interior angles, and you, you would traverse it. But if you create, if you measured a diagonal across there, you had no method of adjusting it unless you adjusted it as two triangles. And it got messy quick. But at least we did understand the importance of adjustments. Then in the early 90s, uh, we were able to hook up our calculators to our instruments. And so our measurements would be brought into the calculator and a coordinate would be generated. And I think at that point, uh, everybody, for the most part, still understood the importance of adjustments and measurement analysis and how that worked. But I think that from that point, or let's say in the early 90s until today, we have a, a whole generation of people that just collect coordinates, go to CAD, and have no sense of why it's probably best not to do that. Uh, and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today. And so let's uh, look at the screen here. And what you have here is this is a star net adjustment. And to give you a sense of what it is, you'll see that it looks open end. If you look here, you have 0.805. And just to give you a sense of scale, uh, I'll inverse from 231 to 232. And that's, uh, 284 feet uh, right here. And so the entire project, let's just go from uh, 247 inverse looking here and going up to 805 would be fine. Uh, well, no, it won't be. Up to, yeah, 805 would be fine. Uh, you have about 7,200 feet if you can see this on the screen up here, right, right here. So in 7,000 feet of traversing. Now, just so you have a sense of what we have here, this is a traverse with a one second instrument that was recently serviced and calibrated. And each one of these setups that you see here, and this, this would be a setup if you look uh, at what we have here, uh, it was either occupied or double determined. Angles were turned four times and uh, you, you, you can see here that how, how we created triangles as we went through. Now we knew it, that we were traversing pretty much in a north-south direction. And so we were throwing out points to where we could. This is down the middle of a golf course. We were throwing out points to create some geometry. Now this isn't a class on StarNet, but I'll show you what you have. Here in the lower left corner, you see the adjustment. And we have 234 uh, directions as opposed to angles. Again, it's not a class on why we do directions instead of angles. 232 distances and uh, all, all said and done, we have about 700 measurements and we did very well. Uh, those familiar with StarNet see that we did very well with our work. We stayed well within the instrument specifications. Now to show you what effect coordinates have, like if you go out and you set up on a point, you backside a point, and you just start doing coordinates and pushing them out, I'm gonna show you what you did here. 
I'm holding the, the, the red triangle shown here is a fixed point. Let's say it's 5,000, 10,000, and let's say that 232 is uh, uh, another monument, and I just say that's north. And that, that's what I did for this example. And I went uh, from 230 feet, and I backsided, and I traversed down here 7,200 feet. And you'll see uh, how, how, I, how I traversed down through here. So here's the problem with coordinates is every time you set a coordinate and then you backsite the previous, you're going to check within a couple hundreds. But what happens is, is as you go further along, your error gets larger as you go. To, to demonstrate that, I'll, I'll jump down here on my network, which is the furthest from my fixed 5,000, 10,000 and north. So I'm about 7,000 feet down the line. Again, these are not side shots. These are uh, double determined, occupied, four angles. And if I click on this line, what it shows me here is that my line major in, in, in 267 feet, I'm plus or minus uh, up four hundreds in the line. So when I set up and I back sight and I'm, I'm 7,000 feet from my control, I'm checking within four hundreds. However, if you look here, you'll see that my major air ellipse is 58 hundreds. So the coordinate shown for that point is plus or minus six tenths. Uh, and so I check to my backside, but I'm six tenths from where I started or from where I think I am. Now I had this happen in, in a case one time where uh, we were doing a tunnel and the tunnel was about a mile long, about very similar to what you see here. Except for in a tunnel, you don't have any ability to traverse out and constrain or to, to improve your geometry. And when you go down into the shaft under, underground, you have a very short backside. And so they, they went in and they had a surveyor go in and he set a point. They had another surveyor go in to check him. And when he checked, they were seven tenths different. And so they, they hired me to come out and figure out which one is right. Well, what I told them is, is that, uh, I wouldn't be able to tell them which one was right because I would go down into the same shaft, perform similar measurements, and I may hit one of them, I may hit the other one, or I may be anywhere in between. And I, I put this into StarNet before I ever went down there and just estimated the number of setups, and my ellipse was seven or eight tenths. And so I, they had seven tenths between them, so I couldn't tell you which one was right or wrong. So I said in order to constrain, you're going to have to bore down through the top and I'm going to have to be able to measure down vertically from the surface to get a fixed location. And of course, that's what we did. We found a scheduled manhole, drilled it out, and I actually measured down about 30 feet vertically into the hole and set a fixed point. Then I was able to constrain and I was able to tell them where their control was. Well, that's true with every one of these surveys. Now, in the event that you were monumenting a subdivision, and you started on the exterior of that subdivision and you were going through and you were setting control as you went, your backsite would always check within a couple of hundreds. However, you would be drifting from your control. If, if your traverse represented something anything like this, your monuments could be off as much as six tenths. And you'd have no way of knowing unless you were to measure from one end to the other uh, using like GPS. This demonstrates why you shouldn't be a coordinate collector. You should have a way of uh, testing your measurements and constraining your measurements. To fix this, what I would do is I would perform static GPS. And you'll see that I have control points uh, shown outside here. These are my constraints with these uh, uh, red triangles are fixed points that had static GPS tied to CGPS or core stations brought in, then constrained to this adjustment. So I run the adjustment, and you'll see over here that my numbers look very good. I have uh, good, good information. And now when I come down and I look at uh, one of these lines, as, as you saw earlier, I'm within 3 hundredths by 1 hundredth uh, relative, but that's not what's really important. What's really important is that I grab one of these points. Now I'm 3 by 3 where one of these points was had a, a, a uncertainty of almost six tenths. Now I'm three by three at 95%. That's very, very good work. I look here, three by two or three by three at 
So how do I how do I constrain? I do GPS, which is one centimeter, one part per million, and I tie the beginning to the end. And frankly, although I'm not a fan of RTK, RTK and constraining is much better than running wide open coordinates. And this is the last and final advantage to using least squares, is I'm able to throw all these different measurements in and do an analysis and come up with a coordinate and come up with a level of confidence. So it's time to put away our clown shoes, pack away our mini bike, and use some least squares for everyday work. Thank you and have a nice day.